In the last few videos, we've looked at a couple new formulas for bond prices, one of which was called the premium discount formula. We used that in the last video to analyze the change in a bond price downward as the yield rate went up. In this video, we're going to use the other formula called the base amount formula to solve problem 7.8 in Kellison's book. I meant to show you that book in the last video, but forgot. Here it is, The Theory of Interest, second edition by Stephen Kellison. We will be using that base amount formula for the price of a bond to calculate the price of a bond when we know uh, the price of another bond that has the same term to maturity, the same yield rate, but twice the coupon rate. Why use the base amount formula here? Well, it turns out in solving this problem, we need to solve for n, the number of coupons, and n is probably most easily solved for in the base amount formula because you don't have any present values of annuities immediate the AN symbol in the formula. So here is the problem statement itself. You've got two bonds. They're both $1,000 bonds, so that is the face amount, also called the par value. It's redeemable at par, so that's also the redemption value, F equals C. At the end of the same period, these bonds, these two bonds have the same term. They both yield 4% convertible semi-annually, so that's 2% per half year. The first bond, call it bond A, costs $1,136.78 and has a coupon rate of 5% convertible semi-annually, so 2.5% per half year. The other bond, which is the one we're interested in, call it bond B, has a coupon rate that's half of the coupon rate for bond A. Bond A's coupon rate is twice the coupon rate for bond B. The goal is to find the price of the second bond. What was the base amount formula? For the price, the price was equal to capital G, called the base amount, which I'll define in a minute here, plus the difference of the redemption amount, C, and the base amount, capital G, times the discount factor, V sub J, raised to the nth power. We are going to need to solve this equation for n, and this is fairly easy to do so because you don't see any ANs in here. We will need to use logarithms though. What is capital G? It's defined in such a way that when you multiply that base amount times the semi-annual yield rate, the effective semi-annual yield rate J, you get the coupon amounts F times R. Okay, so let's now think about this first with bond A. Whose price we know I will we'll omit the dollar signs here. 1,136.78 is the price of bond A. What is its base amount, capital G? We need to figure that out. We can solve this equation for capital G to be F times R over J. So for bond A, F is again 1,000. R is the uh, semi-annual coupon rate. That's going to be half of 5%, 0 0.025 and J is the semi-annual yield rate, half of 4% is 0 0.202. So the coupon amounts are 25. Divide that by 0 0.02. The base amount for bond A is $1,250. I, again, I won't bother with the dollar symbols. So this becomes 1250 plus C is 1000 minus 1250 V is 1 over 1.02. I'm going to raise that to the n power. I can also write that as 1.02 to the negative n power. And if I'm going to solve for the price of bond B with the same formula, the base amount formula, I will need to know n. So let's, we need to solve this for n. This is negative 250 here. So I can rearrange. I can say 250 times 1.02 to the negative n power is 1,250 minus 1,136.78, 113.22. Divide both sides by 250, and you get 1.02 to the negative n equals um, 0.45288 
take the natural log of both sides, um, use properties of logarithms to bring the negative n in front, and then divide both sides by the natural log of 1.02 and negative 1. And what you would get is n to be negative natural log of 0.45288 divided by natural log of 1.02. Let's take the natural log of this thing, hit my ln button here. That's the natural log of 0.45288. Multiply it by negative 1. Well, let's just negate it here. Let's store that in register 0. The natural log of 1.02 is this. Take its reciprocal times what's in register 0. Oops, I think I made a mistake there. N's supposed to come out to be 40. Oh, I forgot what I did. Okay. Let's go 1.02 natural log, store that in register 0. 0.45288 natural log, divide by what's in register 0, negate that, n is coming out to be 40. So 40 half years, that means the term is 20 years. And I will need that now to solve for the price of bond B. Using the same formula, the base amount formula. Uh, first, let's find the base amount for bond B. Once again, that's F times R over J. F is still 1,000. The coupon rate is different. It's half of what it was before. It's half of this, which would be 0 0.0125. The yield rate's the same, though, 0 0.02. The coupons themselves are $12.50. Take 12.5, divide by 0 0.02. Uh, capital G, the base amount here, is smaller. It's 625 instead of 1,250. It's half of what it was before. All right, so now we've got N. We can go ahead and use that formula for the price. 625, I'm looking at this formula here, the base amount formula, plus C is still 1,000 minus 625 times 1.02 to the negative 40th power, we know what n is. This is going to be 375 here. So let's see how this turns out. 1.02 reciprocal raised to the positive 40th power is the same as this, times 375 plus 625 gives $794.83, and that is correct. 794.83 is the right answer for the price of bond B. We know that bond A is selling at a premium higher than the redemption amount C. Bond B is selling at a discount lower than the redemption amount C. But we use the base amount formula again to make it as easy as possible to solve for N. Now you could try this problem with the other formulas, um, but I think this is probably the best formula to use in this situation.